Say, as business owners, um, I know everybody has heard that in some states and cities, your minimum wage is going to go up to about $15 per hour. And, you know, that means that that's going to affect a lot of things. So, you know, um, just how does the minimum wage increases in the cost of living affect your bottom line? It affects it tremendously. And the thing that you have to do is that you have to start making plans and making adjustments for it right now. So you think of this, that, uh, you know, the cost of living adjustment, or COLA, is what it's called. Uh, in the last seven years, the, the range has gone from 0% in 2016 up to 3.6% in 2012. You know, so that, that's a big swing. So uh, you definitely have to make sure that you're passing this on to your clients. And that's why it's so important that you actually have a clause uh, in your agreement or your contract that you have the right to increase prices each year. You know, the cost of living alone uh, can give you a, big, a pretty big hit. Uh, for example, well, in 2019, uh, the, the, the cost of living uh, adjustment will be 2.8%. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's around the average, about 2.5%. But, uh, you know, that's a big hit. Uh, and if you continue to take that year after year after year, uh, depending on what those adjustments are each year, uh, you find yourself uh, behind the eight ball and uh, you're not making any money no more because of the cost of living increases. Uh, you have to be able to make those adjustments uh, and uh, to your clients, uh, meaning that the cost of your service is going to go up, so you have to pass those costs on. Uh, so keep that in mind. So it's always important that you always are checking, uh, checking the cost of living adjustment uh, COLA. Uh, it's just a simple get on the internet, uh, do a simple Google search for cost of living increase or, or cost of living adjustments and you'll be able to get those numbers. Uh, but it's very important that you track that because it is costing you a lot of money. And you know the other, the other part of this uh, is that uh, the minimum wage. Uh, the minimum wage uh, is interesting because it varies from state to state. But like I say, majority of them at some point from 2020 to 2023, they're, they're going to hit $15 per hour. So it's very important for you to know where is your city and state at as far as the minimum wage uh, uh, increases. Well, for example, you know, in uh, Minnesota, if you're a large employer, the current uh, minimum, minimum wage, I think, is $9.84 per hour. Um, and then if you're a small employer, then it's eight eight oh four per hour. And what they do is they, they base, if you're a large employer, that means that you've got a, an annual income of over, or, or ha, annual revenue of $500,000 or more, you're considered a large employer. Uh, then, you know, so on, uh, that the, if you're a small employer, obviously you've got uh, less than $500,000 in revenue. Uh, so, you know, that's how they're classifying that for the state of Minnesota, and that's all fine and good. But now if you think about, the, you know, there's a number of cities in Minnesota, obviously. And, for example, one of them, Minneapolis. Um, uh, in there, you know, it's based off of how many employees you have. So if you have a company that has over 100 employees, uh, you're, you're currently, I think, at $11.25 uh, uh, per hour for the minimum wage. And by uh, 2020, they plan on being at $15 per hour. So you can just see that increase, a three dollars and seventy-five cent increase in in the that time, which is what a couple of years. Uh, that's a big hit. How how often can you can continue to absorb that and and not pass it on to your customers? Well, you can't. You know, uh, the other side of that too is that they have the you know uh, companies that are less than hundred employees. Those are considered small. You know, in this in the city of Minneapolis, uh, they're currently at. $10.25 per hour and by uh, 2021 they're going to be at thirteen fifty per hour. So again, you know, that's a $3.25 increase uh, or if I did my math right, I think that's around 24% increase. Uh, just That's just in two years. Uh, that's huge. So now you start thinking about that increase just for your minimum wage uh, increases and your, your COLA, your cost of living adjustment, you know, that's getting pretty high. You know, so if it's at, uh, you know, let's say it's at 24%, hopefully I did my math correctly. If it's 24% just for the minimum raise uh, increase, and then we're figuring another 2.8% just for uh, the cost of living adjustment for, for 2019, you know, then, uh, you know, what do we got there? We got 26.8%. Uh, that's an increase. 
um, you know that's that's crazy. Uh, and you know maybe if you maybe if you predicted that in uh, 2020 that cost of living let's say it will be 2.5. Uh, so we've got 24 percent, uh, 24 percent increase by then uh, by 20, uh, 2021, and uh, then we have a five, uh, just say five and a half percent increase uh, in in the cola. Um, my gosh, you know that's 30.5 percent increase. You know, how can we not afford to pass that on to our customers? There's no way we can stay in business. We can't maintain our pricing and everything else and, and, and expect to make a fair profit. You just can't do it. You have to pass that, those, uh, those percentages on to your clients. And I recommend that you do that every year. So again, in your agreement or your contract, um, you know, I prefer that you use agreements. Uh, they're, they're just, you know, less uh, legal. Um, but in either way, you call them what you like. Uh, contracts or agreements, but uh, in those, make sure that you have a line item in there about uh, increasing your prices uh, based off of the cost of living and uh, based off the minimum wage increases. Now, you would not think that you'd get much pushback from your clients on this because they're going through the same thing. They're in business also. They're being affected by the same uh, by the same thing. You know, the cost of living and uh, minimum wage increases. Now, it's, it's going to differ, you know, from state to state, like I said, and from city to city, because there may be different laws in there in which, uh, uh, depending on if the employer provides health and health care insurance and or uh, child care benefits, you know, and they may even have a, a range in which uh, that, that is, that then you get a break, you know. But in either case, uh, know what your, your state and your city is set to do and where the laws apply to you you know so make sure that you know that so you can make these adjustments you have to make these adjustments uh, you have to remember that your labor alone affects a lot of your other costs uh, you know such as your insurances and, and uh, um, you know uh, workman's comp and so on and so forth you know most of those things are all based off of wages uh, so if your wages continue to rise so do these uh, other additional costs so you know, so don't be surprised about that. Um, so you just think about that. You know how the how that how those uh, prices of uh, the minimum wage increase and the the uh, cost of living adjustment how that's affecting you because this is huge. It, it's huge, and you you have to make adjustments for it. And uh, as I said before, now just make those adjustments each year. So you know overall, if you're going to be seeing a 24% increase just in the minimum wage uh, in your area. Well, make sure that you're you're you know uh, adjusting that for however many years it's going to be. If it's going to be two years, then you know split the difference and inc have an increase uh, uh, each year of uh, you know that 12 percent. But um, you have to do that and get it in your agreement. Have that conversation with your clients now. Uh, don't go back to them later on uh, when you're in a panic because you haven't been uh, increasing to begin with. Uh, just for the cost of living, but now you have the cost of living and you have the uh, minimum wage increase that you have to deal with. You don't want to go to them and, and say you're going to have to increase things 30, 40, 50 percent, um, you know, just to cover costs. Uh, this all should be addressed uh, when you have your initial conversation when they're a prospect uh, and be upfront with them. Um, and that way it's, no, it's not a surprise and you have this stuff already in your agreements and you're good to go. Uh, now, what I always do is I have it in my agreements, but I have the right to uh, to increase or not. So, and I make that and I make that choice because you know I review every account that I have. So I look at the account, see where I'm at on my profit as as far as operations and everything, uh, and uh, then I'll decide on okay, well, uh, do I increase it five percent or maybe no increase at all, or do I increase it, uh, you know, whatever percent it might be, it might be five six uh, percent uh, increase. You know, I do what I have to do to make sure that we maintain uh, uh, our profits. Uh, you know, we don't want to be to where we've got an account where we're making 35% profit on it. And now because of these increases, next thing you know, you know, our profits are uh, dwindled down to 18% or even lower, uh, which, which could happen. You know, because even some accounts, you might not even be making 35% uh, on them. You're probably only at uh, uh, 7%, depending on the size and type of account. Uh, so just think of that. If you if you got an account that where you're making seven percent profit, um, and uh, you start taking some of these hits, and you're not, and you're not uh, adjusting for the increases, uh, how long can you stay in business, or how long can you stay uh, keep that account before you have to do something drastically to 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 get back into the uh, you know back into the black? 
you know. So anyway, uh, keep that in mind. Like I say, you know, every state's different. Uh, New York City now uh, come uh, seven one twenty one. They're going to be at fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, we got California is uh, you know they've got a lot of deal uh, issues out there. You know their workman's comp and insurance is really high. And now also that they're uh, uh, if you're uh, if you have twenty five or fewer employees uh, as of one one twenty three, they're going to be at fifteen dollars per hour. Also, uh, Florida is probably one of the lower states that I know of. Uh, and at 1119, they were at 840, uh, 846 uh, per hour. So again, you know, it really makes a difference where you're doing business at. Uh, there are multiple states that are still at those those low rates, you know, of eight uh, eight something uh, per hour. But uh, you know, again, um, in those in those cases, and if those uh, cities and states aren't going to be raising their minimum wage, you know, up to those fifteen dollar uh, an hour benchmarks, well, then we have to also make sure that. Uh, we're padding it for the cost of living adjustment because that doesn't go away. Uh, you know, uh, for whatever reason, like I say, in, in uh, 2016 there was a zero percent uh, increase. Uh, so, but that's not the norm. I think uh, the average uh, I calculated to be around two and a half percent for your your uh, cost of living adjustment. So, uh, if you don't if you don't have to deal with your minimum wage increase, good for you but make sure you put in that cost of living adjustment. Uh, that should be in your agreement. And uh, I hope that you find this helpful. Uh, I'm Steve Hansen with the Janitorial Store where we help uh, cleaning businesses start, grow, and scale their cleaning companies. Talk to you later. Thanks.